Okay, please, go ahead. Now, before you go on, um, it says, And the Lord had blessed Abraham in all things. Fulfillment of the promise made way back in what, Genesis 15, 6, or maybe even Genesis 12. Um, I think it's probably the first time was back in 12. Uh, let's see here. Get out. Yeah, it says uh, 12 2. It says, I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great, and you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and curse those who curse you. And in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So it's just confirming that the promise is already being fulfilled in the life of Abraham in the first verse of chapter 24. Okay, verse 2. And Abraham said to his servant, the oldest of his household, who had charge of all the land, all that he had, put your hand under my thigh. That I may make that I may make you swear by the Lord, the God of heaven and the God of earth, that you will not take a wife for my son from the daughters of the Canaanites. Okay, real quickly here. It says, put your hand under my thigh. There are a couple views on it. I would tend with the, uh, the, the more stricter view. You're putting your hand under a thigh, and it's, it's saying, I am making a vow. And this, is, this would be like a solemn oath. I swear, putting your hand on the Bible in, a, in a, a court. Some people mean, when it says, put your hand under my thigh, it actually means put it on my... I mean, that is the most personal part of Abraham, and he is swearing on that. I, I'm talking about the two, not the one. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean that. Anyway, uh, but that, that is, I, I have heard that, and I would tend to agree that's probably true. And, you know, as a matter of fact, that is, and I, I hate to do this, but I'm going to do it, so please, if it offends you, close your eyes now. But apparently, Roman soldiers, when they swore, they said, I swear, okay? So it, it, it's saying that, yeah. What's that? Yeah, that's right. It, it, it's saying that this is a vow that is so valid that I am swearing on my most prized possessions. Mm -hmm. And if I violate this vow, and that is what yeah. is happening here. Now, I don't want to be dogmatic about that, but that's what I do believe, and I would tend to agree with that particular uh, reading, is that when he says under my thigh, he means not actually on my thigh, but... Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> okay, enough of that. <laughs> yeah, that exactly. Yeah. Oh. oh, my goodness. Oh. Boy, I'm sweating. My underarms are sweating. I got through that part. <laughs> uh, okay, please, go ahead. I don't remember where we were, but I'll let you go ahead. I've been blinded by my own... Uh, <sighs> I will go to my country and to my kingdom and take a wife for my son Isaac. Okay, Abraham does not want a child from the Canaanites, okay? And we're going to see that that does cause problems yeah. later. Uh, as a matter of fact, who was it that did, maybe uh, Seth did the sermon on it, uh, but later on we're going to see where that type of Esau, thing, where Esau. where Esau, it says he took, uh, had two daughters uh, of the sons of the Hittites or whatever, and it, this displeased the Lord, so he went out and he da married a daughter of, I think her name was Mahala, the daughter of Ishmael. Anyway, he went and married an Ishmaelite in order to make his mom and dad happy, but uh, uh, yeah, Abraham did not want him marrying a pagan person. He wanted it somebody from his own family. Okay, so please go ahead. The servant said to him, Perhaps the woman may not be willing to follow me to this land. But I must take <clears throat> but I must take your son back to the land from which you came. Abraham said to him, See to it that you do not take my son back there. Okay, now I have a feeling, and I, I, I don't know if this is something I read and it's just been ingrained in me or if it's just what I've thought through, but I have a feeling, he said, make sure you don't take my son back there, is he does not want his son leaving what God has promised, the inheritance down here. Now, this is kind of the opposite of Jacob, who does go back there and he spends time there, but I, I have a feeling maybe it was really beautiful there or whatever reason. He's afraid that his son is going to go and not come back to the land where he's supposed to be living. So rather than doing that, he's sending a servant to get a, a wife for him and bring her back. But he says, do not take my son there. And I think that's probably the reason why. It's just to make sure that the promises of God are, you know. In other words, he has done what he did and had Ishmael. It was lacking faith or whatever reason you want to ascribe to it, which, you know, Seth came to a different conclusion, which I agree with, that they were actually trying to fulfill the Lord's word and doing it in a manner that was acceptable. But for whatever reason, he doesn't want to make any errors as he has in the past. And so he's going with, keep my son here, bring a daughter back from there for him. Okay, go ahead. The Lord of God of heaven, who, 
<clears throat> who took me from my father's house and from the land of my kindred, and who, and who spoke to me and swore to me, to your offspring I will give this land. He will send his angel before you, and you shall take a wife for my son from there. But if the woman is not willing to follow you, then you will be free from this oath of mine. Only you must not take my son back there. Okay, so he's made an oath on Abraham, but I'm sure that it means that his oath is binding on him. You know what I'm saying? So if you don't fulfill your oath, then you're... you're yeah, anyway, um, and so he says, but if, you, if she doesn't come, then you're freed from this oath. Okay, so he's probably like, oh, wow, pressure's off on that one. Yeah. Anyway, okay, verse 9. So the servant put his hand on the thigh of Abraham, his master, and swore to him concerning his matters. Then the servant took ten of his master's camels and departed, taking all sorts of choice gifts from, from his master. And he arose and went to Mesopotamia, to the city of Nair. Okay, so here he is. He's uh, uh, ten camels. That's a lot of stuff you can fit on ten camels if you've ever seen that. They, they do carry a lot, and so he's sending a lot of stuff up there. And um, just so you know, it, he's not sending them back to Ur of the Chaldeans. Here's Israel, my wonderful drawing here. And then this is over in the land of Babylon, and Abraham came from somewhere down in Ur, and this is the Euphrates River. And from Ur, they went over the Euphrates and stopped, remember? And they, I, I believe they named the city Nahor after the son Nahor who died in Ur of the Chaldeans. Anyway, this is where it is in Upper Mesopotamia, and then uh, actually Israel would be down here. So you got Lebanon up here, and anyway, somewhere in Syria, that I think is where they are. But it's not back in the land where he originally came from. It's the land where they stopped, where his father Haran, I think, had died. What, I think that's the name of his father. Anyway, um, so that's where that's happening, not back in the land of Babylon. Okay, please. And he made the camels kneel <clears throat> down outside the city by the well of water at the time of evening, the time when <clears throat> women go out to draw water. And he said, Oh, Lord. God of my master Abraham, please grant me success today and show steadfast love to my master Abraham. Okay, now one thing is I have no idea why it says evening time, but it says that. If you ever come to something like that, a lot of times in the Bible, the time of day, evening, morning, whatever is mentioned, there's always a reason. In this case, I don't know one person uh, who thought the rapture was going to happen at one time says so it's going to happen in the evening because, well, good deal. The rapture is, no doubt, going to happen in the evening. Yeah. We've already discussed this. There's always the evening on earth somewhere. So, you know, it makes no sense for somebody to say something like that. But there is a reason why the evening is mentioned. He stops at a well and uh, at the time when the women go out to water. Maybe that's why evening is mentioned. It's just because it's the time when women go out to water. All right. Is that one explaining the other? Okay. So we get to, uh, we're in verse 12 now. Is that where we are? Yeah. Okay, please. Well, actually, Thirteen. Thirteen. Okay. Thirteen. 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 <clears throat> Behold, I am standing by the spring of water, and the daughters of the men of the city are coming out to draw water. Let the young woman to whom I say, shall say, Please let down your jar that I may drink. And who shall say, Drink, and I will water your camels. Let her be the one whom you have appointed for your servant Isaac, by this I shall know that you have shown steadfast love to my master. Okay, oh, are we dealing here with somebody that's looking for um, a, a coincidence? You know, because a lot of people will say, well, if I see a shooting star tonight, I know I'm supposed to marry this girl. <laughs> or are we dealing with somebody that has faith? Yeah. Right, he's very specific. Yeah. He, he, he says, if I hear this and this and this, so it, it's more than just a person looking for a supernatural omen. In other words, this person is a believer in the God of Abraham. Abraham raised him in his tent, and he is a believer in it. I'm certain of that, and I'll tell you why in a few yeah. verses. But I, I, I believe that's absolutely... Is he okay? Yeah, he just had to go. i got to go. Oh, okay. Oh, I'm, all right. Well, I'm just... He left, and I, I didn't... I saw him whispering. I thought maybe he wasn't feeling well. Um, okay, anyway, so uh, in a few verses, we're going to find out why I believe what I believe about that. But uh, uh, right, anyway, please, go ahead. Before he had finished speaking, behold, Rebekah, who was born to Bethel, the son of Milcah, the wife of Nahor, 
Abraham's brother came out with her water jar on her shoulder. The young woman was very attractive in appearance, a maiden who no man had known. She went down to the spring and filled her jar and came up. Then the servant ran to meet her and said, Please give me a little water to drink from your jar. She said, Drink, my lord. And she quickly let down her jar <coughs> upon her hand and gave him a drink. When she had finished giving him a drink, she said, I will go over for your camels also until they have finished drinking. Okay, now hold on one sec. Um, we were at, uh, I want to go back just a couple of verses here. And uh, it says here, at, and it happened before he had finished speaking that Rebecca, okay, so we have a person's name here, was born to Bethuel, son of Milcah. If you go back to, um, I think it's uh, Genesis 22, right after the account of Abraham, okay, going up with Isaac to sacrifice Isaac, you get to verse 20, it said, Now it came to pass after these things that it was told Abraham, saying, Indeed, Milcah has borne children to your brother Nahor. Who's his firstborn? Born, Buz his brother, Kemuel, the father of Aram, Chesed, Hazo, Pildesh, Yidlaf, and Bethuel. And Bethuel begot Rebekah. As I said, the reason why Sarah is not mentioned again after the account of Isaac has nothing to do with Abraham disobeying God. It's because she's no longer an important part of this story that is leading up to the Messiah. But what you do see after that is a new generation of people being mentioned, including Milcah, and then you have Bethuel, and you have Rebekah. That is now the focus of God's attention and what he is doing in redemptive history. So when you read these crazy analysis by people, like the Jewish people that are trying to dismiss the obvious of what God did by giving a pattern of Abraham and his son Isaac in Jesus carrying his cross and Isaac carrying his wood and all of these different things. That's what's going on. So despite the fact that I like to look at Jewish commentaries, I like to look at Josephus and all of these other things, we need to be really, really careful that when we read them, we weed out all of the stuff that's nonsense. And there's a lot of nonsense in there. People are making stuff up out of their head for their own agendas. The reason why that's mentioned in there is because we just got to it. Rebecca is the next one that is going to have an impact in the life of the coming Messiah because she's going to marry Isaac. Okay? That's why. All right. So please, go ahead. So she quickly emptied her jar into the trough and ran again to the well to draw water. And she drew, and she drew for all his camels. The man gazed at her in silence to learn whether the Lord had prospered his journey or not. When the camels had finished drinking, the man took a gold ring weighing a half a shekel and two bracelets for her arms weighing ten gold shekels. Okay, real quickly, he, uh, uh, he was very patient as she did the entire job. He wet, watered her. She said, I'll water your camels. You got ten camels to water. There's probably a lot of water because they store up all that water in their hump. Oh, you got to go too. Wow, three in a row. Have a nice day. Oh, yeah. So, um... And mom's going to take off for her boyfriend here any minute. So. Oh, not today. Okay. All right. All right. Take care now. But you got to figure that all the water that they store in their hump, and they probably went through all of it, that's going to take a lot of watering. And she was faithful to go through the whole process. So um, he stood there and patiently waited while she did the whole thing to make sure that this is the girl that he has asked for from the Lord. All right. So, and then what does he do? He takes out a nose ring weighing a half a shekel. It's gold. It's, it's you know, it, it's not just some cheap thing. And two bracelets weighing ten shekels of gold. So there's plenty of gold there. All right, and that's going to bear on something that comes in just a minute. But go ahead, please. 23. I said, please tell me whose daughter you are. Is there room in your father's house for us to spend the night? She said to him, I am the daughter of Bethel the son of Milcai, whom she bore to Nehor. She, she added, we have plenty of uh, both straw and fodder and room to spend the night. The man bowed his head and worshipped the Lord and said, Blessed be the Lord, the God of my master Abraham, who has not forsaken his steadfast love and his faithfulness towards my master. As for me, the Lord has led me in the way to the house of my master's kinsmen. Okay, so real quickly we have, he's acknowledged the Lord, the, the God, the master of my ma master Abraham. It is no chance at all that it happens to be 
a person that is related 